hello everyone. My name is Marion with DTM Real Talk Channel. It's the channel that you can tune into, have the ability to listen to the thoughts of others about topics all over the world that touch every one of our lives. Everybody, everybody goes through basically the same thing. There is nothing new under the sun. So if you're going through, someone else has already been there. Maybe you can find hope. Maybe it's a pathway that can set you on the right road just by tuning in. So DTM, real talk, just keeping it real. And if you like it, like us at the bottom, subscribe, and let us know just how we helped you. Just keeping it real, nothing but love. Good evening, good evening. This is DTM Real Talk, and we are just keeping it real in 2024. Hope you guys had a good, good, good new year coming in and looking forward to a great new year this year. So if this is your first time tuning in, say hi to the good folks of my friend right there. That's my childhood friend. Say hi, Albert. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> he hey, handsome, how y'all? <laughs> He married. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me stop. Let me stop. I had to make him laugh. Uh, his wife going to get me. She, she back there high. Jen. But anyway, let me stop. Okay. All right. If this is your first time tuning in to DTM Real Talk, please like, share, and subscribe. And hopefully something that's said will help you, will encourage you, will will inspire you will give you hope and we're just we're just we're just keeping it real and y'all last week we did a review got some positive uh feedback from it thank you thank you thank you but the week before that we had KC Stevens on sharing his story about uh his journey to a new heart and he got a new heart so this week beginning this first week of 2024 I would like for my friend who I call Bucket to share his story from childhood up until where he is now. And this is going to be good because I know a little bit of it, but I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> so I can tell the good folks where you, where do you live? Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Harvard, Louisiana. Uh, right now I'm living in Marrero uh, with my wife and, and uh, my two grandchildren in Plantation Estates off of Baratoria. Uh, but I'm originally from Harvey. Uh, oh. And, and and my childhood brought me back to who raised me. At six months old, uh, my mother was sick because she had just had a baby, which was uh, my, my brother Robert. Oh. And my grandmother, my grandmother came and got me at six months old. Gotcha, I gotcha. So grandmother and brought me right and brought me to Mississippi, and ah. it was supposed it was supposed to be. For a short period of time while my mother healed. Gotcha. But and you know how grandparents are that never materialized. So I stayed there until I was 11 years old. Oh, okay, okay. And then I came back to Harvey. Gotcha. See, I met you when you was 11. How about that? That's right. That's yeah, right. see, I know all that all that is. See, see, y'all I didn't know. Okay, so <laughs> when you came, <laughs> so when you came here. How was life here? How many siblings do you have? I have three uh, biological mother and father children. Okay. I uh, was Poochie, Poochie Robert, and myself. Okay. And I also had two uh, brothers, what people call stepbrothers. I don't believe in that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, John and, and and Floyd. Okay. They 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 had two different fathers, but the same mother. Gotcha. I actually remember them. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Okay. And so, so do you have children yourself? I have, I had six boys. Uh, one passed a couple of years ago. Sorry. I, I have five left. And uh, I, I, when it comes to my children, I don't have a good testimony uh, about that because I wasn't there in their lives like I should have been. Okay. And so that that created some things in them, some hatred, some hurt. 
and because they didn't understand, they they got bitter. Okay. And like I say, that bitterness turned to hatred. And so they really didn't want to have anything to do with me. Okay. And it's really not, it's really the same way now in many ways. Well, let's back I've up. Had, so let's back up. Let's back up. We, we were on now. Let's back up before. So what, why do you think that they didn't have, they would, didn't have any, didn't understand? What is it that they didn't understand? Well, first of all, then this is just in my opinion. <clears throat> in relationships, okay. it takes two people to hold it together. Sure. Because I never, I never took the time or opportunity to tell my children about what I didn't like about their mothers. Okay. It wasn't necessary. Right. Uh at least at that time anyway, and I still don't feel like it's necessary. But <clears throat> but on the other hand, their mother was different. She was bitter toward me for whatever reasons, and so she used that time to turn the kids against me. Okay. And so they, they she raised them, teaching them things about me that wasn't true. Okay. And so rather than for me to retaliate by telling them, but this is what she did. I didn't feel like that was necessary. Okay. So when they grew up and I had an opportunity to, to talk to them, I told them that I wanted them to sit down and let's talk. And I wanted them to tell me exactly where they are, what they feel. Whatever okay. it is you feel, I want you to have the opportunity to open up with me. So how did Whatever that turn they, out? How did that turn out? Hmm? So how did that turn out? Well, we with, with, with most of them, we had a good talk. Uh, but it it proved not to be true, that the answers that they gave me. Because we left after talking to them. Uh, we left out of that conversation. And by them not living here, uh, they went back to their home, one in Atlanta, um, two in Atlanta at that time. Uh, Albert Jr. is here. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the one who died, he was here. And then I got another one now that's in Texas, Chris. Well, the ones that, and Chris was not one of those because he he never gave me an opportunity to talk to him. He never even answered me. Okay. Never had one have, had wanted to have anything to do with me. The one, the one who died, Kelly, he was the same way he told his mother prior to his death when I was trying to get in touch with him to talk to him. He she told he told uh, his mother, well, what do he want now? Kidney? Oh wow, okay. You see what I'm saying? So that it was really bad. Okay. And so he and I had a chance to talk to him though, and we were supposed to meet, but every time that time came around, it did not happen. Okay. Okay. So, so now he passed. so he passed. Okay, so I'm I'm listening. This part, I knew none of this, y'all. I thought he was going somewhere else with a story, but he going here. That's fine. So this is good for the good folks. What I'm hearing is a lot of unforgiveness. Is that right? That's exactly right. Okay. So in unforgiveness, do you have any idea why they would be angry with you or why they would not forgive you? Or... Well, I, I just explained that. Uh, yeah. It's because I left them at a vulnerable time in their lives, a time when children would not understand. Okay. They didn't and understand so, why you left. Okay. Okay. You understand? Yes. Okay. And so since I didn't have uh, a mother, uh, their mother to be where I was as sensitive to their needs as I was, she chose that time to drive the pain, the hurt, whatever it was that they were feeling, she drove that in them. Whereas I chose not to do that. Okay. So I waited on the time when I thought that it would be old enough where I would be able to talk to them gotcha. and share truth with them. Gotcha. But I did that because I wanted, when I asked them for the conversation, to have the conversation, I made it clear that I wanted them. I wasn't making any excuses for my actions. I wanted them to share with me what they felt. Gotcha. The bitterness and all of the stuff that you're asking me about. Mm -hmm. You see? And so 
And they talk a little bit about it. And uh and, and and then at the end of those days, those conversations, we I thought we had come to a place where we had forgiven and were ready to move on based on the way they responded. And they agreed that we would move on. But like I said, after the conversation, they went back home to the different various places and I never hear from them again. Right, and communication didn't continue. Yeah, it didn't. And I would call and call because when they left, I, 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 I made it clear that what I wanted to do in, in uh, building our, establishing our relationship that was broken, let's decide, let's agree to contact each other, spend time with each other, even on the phone, uh, at least once a week. Mm -hmm. okay. That was agreed upon. It happened one week. Oh, wow. And then the next week disappeared again. Nothing. So I, I don't want to say that what, what they said was not genuine. I don't want to say that they were just pushing things along. I, I, I'd rather say that it's just too deep for them right now. Right. So the bottom line is I know where we are now. It's going to take more than me. Right. It's going to take God. Right. And so okay. I've given, I, I, go ahead. No, go ahead. So okay. I've given the whole thing, the entire thing to God. And I'm waiting to God to do what I can't do. Right. But I'm waiting. Now, when I give it to God, I'm watching because I believe God hears me when I pray. And yeah. then when it's according to his will, he's on the job. Right. And so I'm watching, carefully watching, to see any indication coming from them that God is, is at work. Okay. Okay. As of now, I haven't seen that. And you do realize that sometimes you may not see that. Oh, yeah. I realized that I, I could be going home to be with the Lord and not see it. Yeah. Now, based you, on you they, can still be here and not see it. <laughs> see God. Oh, yeah. Well, what I was saying was when you say cannot see it, I and when I, you know, I can I can hope for it as long as I'm here. Yes. And, and while I'm here, I'm that's why I'm constantly looking. Yes. yes. But I told the Lord that it's it's just it's possible that I won't be here. Okay. Okay. But I but 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 because I trust him to do what I ask him, because I believe he's going to do what I ask him which was not to hold my sins against them and cause them to be bitter and wind up repeating what I repeated. Gotcha. You see? And so, Father, if I'm not here, is what I told the Lord, I want you to bring healing to them. Make them know that they were already forgiven by me. By you. Gotcha. gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm listening. And I'm thinking about other fathers out there right now that are experiencing some of the same things that you're sharing right now. So mm -hmm. on the reality side, how did that make you feel that they didn't keep their word, the one that said they would? And they oh, man. keep Dave. I, I really, it's hard for me to describe um, what that did. And yet, I understood that what I was getting is what I produced. I was to blame for it all mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Now, I, even though I hoped that at some point in life that they would give me an opportunity to share with them and to explain with them, to explain certain things to them, even while I was hoping that at some point in life, they will see that a lot of things that they were told by their mothers was a lie. Right. I hope for all of that. But it, it, it did, none of that has happened or didn't do any good up until this point. So I refuse still today. I have yet to say the things about their mother that she said about me. I refuse to say things about her to let to make them feel like she was uh, or not the mother she was supposed to be. I kept that from them. You understand? Yes. Because that's not the way I I, I, I feel like it should have been done. And I'm I'm hoping, still hoping, that God will honor that. Mm -hmm. 
and do whatever is necessary for them to finally come clean, be genuine. God will move them past the pain that will not allow them to follow through with even the promises that they make. Because mm -hmm. when they make those promises, I already know that Satan is going to move in right away mm -hmm. to keep it from taking place. So mm -hmm. I don't blame them at all. But I do know that it's past my ability to bring about change. Right. And so that's why I put it all in God's hand. Right. But again, it's in his hand, but I am waiting. I am watching closely to see if and when he would do uh, anything that indicates that now I have opportunity to, to, to share with them and really make a difference. Gotcha. Gotcha. Share with the fathers out there the feelings. Uh, you said you said it's almost undescribable, but try to describe yeah. the feelings. Yeah, that. it is. It is because of the because of the pain that I feel. Yes. Yeah. To let there's a real there's a realization that I'm faced with. And that realization is that regardless to the relationship that their mother and I did not have, regardless to who was at fault or blame for the separation, the divorce, uh I'm held accountable as a father because I was not supposed to let my differences with her keep me away from the kids. And that's why I take full responsibility for everything. But what I want to say to the fathers, it takes two people in agreement to work together in the best interest of the kids. We all know that, mm -hmm. but guess what? It doesn't happen that way all the time. Right. We have scorned women, we have scorned men, and they don't realize what they're doing or what they're saying when they're talking to the kids about their mother or their father. They don't realize what they're creating. And so that's where I fell in at. So between my own actions, and where she is being scorned, it really put it really put these children in a bad place. Hmm. And I and and I know that the place is so bad until if you don't learn to forgive and talk through things, the very thing that you hate, you will probably wind up being. That's correct. And that's what I brought to the Lord. Yeah. Wow. Well, if I'm here or not, Father, what I'm what I what I want the most is that you will not allow them to stay like they are, bitter and hurt. Make them know, even if while and when I'm gone, they see it later. Mm. I don't want them to feel like I wish my father was still here because of the way that they treated me. I don't want that. Gotcha. So I ask the Lord to make them see that I forgive them. I had already forgive them already. Uh -huh. Do whatever is necessary to make them free so that they won't repeat what I did. Right, right. Gotcha. So that, that's what I would say to the fathers, but not just the fathers, the mothers too. Mm -hmm. Be careful about what you do or say to your kids right. about their mother or their father mm -hmm. because it's because being based on what you feel mm -hmm. and you moving by your emotions the whole time. Stop telling your children that that person don't care, never did care. Mm. Right. Fight. Huh? I said, right. Okay. So, that's that's all I would say, you know, is just just be careful and realize, first of all, where it starts at, it begins with you. If a relationship does not work and you work hard at it to make it work and it just doesn't work, don't allow that to keep you away from your kids. Right. You don't have to tell your kids something, anything bad about 
their mother or their father. That's not even necessary. You just need to be in your kid's life enough so that they will see you still as their father, still see you as a person that's in their life and that cares about them and caters to their needs in life. Mm. And at some later date, if God decides to show them anything, well, they'll be able to see it. But even then, you'll be able to share with them the thing that they need so that they can forgive that person. Right. And, and, and then too, that God will allow the individual, you or the mother to share mm -hmm. with that child, whatever yes. it is that they need to hear. That's exactly yes. right. And that's why I, I, I had hope. That that's why you wanted the conversation. Time. Yeah. With them. Yeah. So that hadn't materialized. Right. And so that all that did was show me just how deeply embedded this thing is. Mm. See what I'm saying? There are some things that God will allow us to make amends to, bring healing to. Mm -hmm. But it's important to understand that there are some choices that we make can lead us down a path that only God can bring us out. Only God can mend. So be careful about your choices yeah. in the beginning. Make, make the right choices. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, thank you so much for sharing, for sharing that part of your story. And then what I what I think you 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 kept saying, as long as I'm here, when I'm gone. Did I not hear you say not long ago that you had a diagnosis? That's right. Uh not what it's been almost two almost two years now. Two years uh, ago. Over, almost, yeah. Um oh. It's over a year. It was a year in, I don't know, April or something. Yeah, so April next this year we're in we're in 2024. So May, April, whatever. April, May of this year, it will be two years. Uh I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Stop right there. No. Stop right there. I want you to share that with the good folks next mm -hmm. week because I've kind of took a peek into your journey every time, you know, you guys were going in and out of the doctor. And I want you to share that with the good folks. Well, with that said, y'all, get ready for next week. This is DTM Real Talk. This is going to be a journey through what the doctors say wasn't supposed to be. We'll see y'all next week. DTM Real Talk. Be sure to join us for more conversation. And oh yeah, don't forget to hit that like button, share, and subscribe while you're there.